So hello and welcome to the Video Nap and Twitter Tips Up Challenge for the final day of the Cheltenham Festival 2018. Quickly start off with a review of day three. That man, Davey Russell, countless times, he is the man for Cheltenham. He rides the course so well. You know, when people say to me, you know, who who do you think's best on a horse? If you would have a horse, we'll run at Cheltenham. I always tell people Davey Russell. The man is a genius. He rides the course so well. Strong to finish. Ice cool, like, in the middle of a race. I think the man is just incredible. As you'll see, in the tips to come, uh, he, he's riding a few of them. But this, you know, Delta work, great ride. Balco, Balco de Flow did all he could to get, you know, under so unsettled. The storyteller, what a great ride he gave that. Man is incredible. For the stayers, another man who's fairly incredible, well, Willie Mullins, an exceptional training performance to get Penn Hill, you know, to win that race off after nearly a year off. And that was quite a good little race, actually. Cracking training performance, all, all credit to Willie Mullins. We'll quickly go into the Twitter, Twitter tips to challenge. I'll mention it now, so I've got to mention it later. Thursday's winner was in Ludo Veritas, otherwise known as Bob. Um, so, uh, fair play to him, uh, a worthy winner. He naps the storytellers, all credit to him. The final uh, Twitter tips that challenges of the week. Then a few changes to the original schedule. There is myself, Mick McHugh, Aaron Stokes, Smedo, and Graham Woods. So check out their tips below the tweet. The video nap I'll mention once and all through all the races, which I will start now. So we start with the Triumph Hurdle. Now, it's a good little race. This is a really good race. It's a smaller field than usual, but probably, uh, you know, it, it, it's testament to the quality of the horses that are there. Probably some horses that maybe had bit chances of sort of, you know, um, stayed away. Um, the main fancy is going to be Redisian. Now, he's free from free for Alan King so far, a, a, a trainer who we know can train a winner of this race, who does so well with juveniles. Um, He's won his three races at all at Kenton so far by an aggregate of 27 lengths. He travels so well, he jumps very well, and he, and he powers clear, like you know, towards the end of his races. Yes, Cheltenham's a doubt, but if he if he can you know transfer his form from Kenton to Cheltenham, I think he's going to be a massive player here and one to watch for sure. Um, the secondary pick is a slightly bigger prize. It's Saldier for Willie Mullins. Now, I think he might be at like, the third choice of Mullins is on paper, but. You can't argue with how he won his um you know debut over in Ireland for Mullins, won it very easily, you know, jumped fairly well in the main, travelled like a good horse. Yes, it's a massive step up, we can't deny that, but there was plenty to like about the way he did that and hopefully again, a bit similar to Redition, similar to a lot of these to be honest, if he can, you know, transfer that form from his debut win to this race, then it could go well at about 11 to 1. Now, there's some quality horses in this. Apple Shakira, a worthy favourite, did nothing wrong so far in Britain. The only thing for me, because she's been race, you know, winning all her races at Cheltenham, I just think that sometimes, well, she does, she looks in trouble sometimes. She, you know, Geraghty is out to niggle at her. I think that she will, in time, like an Apple's Jade, will improve for further. And, um, you know, she, she, she gets niggled out and she actually, she does most of her running towards the end of the race. That's when she starts to power clear. You know, sometimes, especially I think, I think it was last time out when um, she beat Look My Way. She almost looked like she was going to get beat, actually. And I remember watching it and I'm thinking, my God, Look My Way might do it. But just as soon as she, she sort of asked towards the end of the race, she kicks clear. Now, obviously, I'm not denying her class, but in a race like this, it's obviously the toughest she's ran it, as it is for everybody. But she... She's going to have that stretch for limit here. And if she's powering on too late, if it's too late in the day, then, you know, she might not be getting ahead in front. So, got to respect her, but this is a tough race and I'm, I'm tentatively going elsewhere. Who else have we got? Far Class and Mr. Adjudicator were, were, well, Far Class was second, Mr. Adjudicator was first um, in a group one at Leopardstown last time. They were so narrowly matched. And I was not think when horses are so closely matched like that, I always feel like there may be one horse somewhere along the line that could prove too good for them both. And I just feel like that, that could be the case here. I feel like those two are quite closely matched. 
so I would not be surprised if a horse proved too good for them. Stormy Island, love the way that, um, she won on debut, but absolutely, absolutely trounced them from the front, but had them around for 90 days, that's a, a slight worry, I, you know, I don't think at least Triumph Hurdle winners in recent years have had a break of, you know, more than 90 days around then when winning this, so that's a slight concern. You'd like to have seen her run, um, you know, in another race at Leopardstown, maybe uh, in the meantime, b b between then and this you know, the Triumph Hurdle, but you know, she's obviously, she's got a, a really good profile and you couldn't argue the way she would on her debut. But for me, I would have liked to have seen her run again. So maybe again, possibly tentatively, one, two, swerve. We move on to the county hurdle. My God, that's wide open. Uh, I've got a couple of horses who are closely matched, uh, who I'm going to mention in a minute. The main fancy, I can't pronounce... Um, I can't pronounce her name for Love No Money, but it's Manima Elaine. Irish Irish people out there who can who can speak Gaelic, please um, put, uh, correct me on that. Won twice this season, very nicely. The last of which being at Cheltenham, very nicely. Obviously improving, obviously in the form of her life, so she is well worth a go. The two horses were closely matched. Are both trained by Gordon Elliott, Ben Dundee, and Duke de Tay. Uh, for Ben Dundee, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've had a couple of dangerous horses today. He's one of them. Um, you know, he won on his seasonal debut. He's been beat a few times since, but has he been plotted towards this? We saw how Delta Work was so well plotted for the per attempts, you know, in, in, in hindsight. And I feel like, yeah, Ben Dundee is well worth a go. For, as for Duke de Tay, lightly raced. If you ignore last time out when... He ran no sort of a race, but I feel as though, um, you know, you could, if you give him the benefit of doubt, then he could be, as I say, unexposed and possibly well-weighted for another man having a decent week in Jack Kennedy. On to the Albert Bartlett. Um, as you know, quickly, the other horse that's slightly for the county herd, I missed my, um, you know, my uh, you know, shortlist was Chesterfield. Uh Another course winner who won on the poly track and jumped the bumper last time out. Have him tuned up for this, but just missed out. But would not be surprised to see him win a big race either. Albert Bartlett, a horse that um, I've loved for, well, it's two runs in Britain. Santini, absolutely love the horse. Beat the re-opposing and, I think, joint favourite, Chef De well, joint favourite for this race, Chef Deso Bell on his British debut by four and a half lengths. Won at Cheltenham next time out, beating Black Couple, who obviously was the, was the closest horse to Sam Crow in the Ballymore. Um, the, the step up in trip obviously is a doubt in terms of his his um, starts and the rules. He's won an English point to point over three miles, though, so he'd like to think he'd stay. Interestingly, how um, you know Nicky Henderson had plans to originally swerve this race. They've decided to run. Love his profile, unexposed. Ought to stay, beating the right horses. For me, he's the one to beat. A couple a couple more, I've got for free. A couple more that I like at bigger prices. Well, two horses that ran in the same race last time out. Uh, Tower Bridge won last time out at Leopard's Tower. And I think it was over two miles six. Ran like a horse who um, would appreciate further. 20 to 1 looks big. Dorman Park was fourth that day, but again, it was like three miles is definitely his bag. David Russell rides, has had wind up, had a wind up, so it's like to bring that improvement. And if you look at his uh, win, uh, two starts back in a mad race at Phil's when they basically ran for a swimming pool, uh, it proves that he's, he, he, he will battle. He's, he, he isn't going to shirk, like, you know, I say he's going to shirk a battle. He's tough. And it will stay and it'll stay and it'll stay. And again, 16 to 1, if the wind up has had the desired effect, ought to be getting close. Uh, a couple more that I liked for the race were Mr. Whipped and Talk is Cheap, two English trained horses. Mr. Whipped for Henderson, uh, Talk is Cheap for Alan King. Both been running well this season. Only reason why I didn't go for them was I just think maybe they might find a too, few too good, including uh, Santini for one. On to the big race of the day, big race of the week. It's the Gold Cup. Um, I've got a free in this race. Road to Respect is the main fancy. You know, in a race where I think there's question marks like a lot of these, I'll talk through some of the others where I think the question marks apply. Road to respect is solid. 
a big win last time out of Leopardstown when he fought and it was a you know a, a solid okay, it's just solid it's solid is the word the buzzword it was a solid win he beat Balco they flow look what he did on the first day two starts back beaten by Outlander but you know again it's another good run yes he was beaten but if we look at how Outlander is 33 to 1 and I don't think I don't think Cheltenham's his bag I would fully expect Rhodes to respect to reverse that form a course winner six length winner of uh, I can't remember exactly which handicap it's the handicap it's the one that was yesterday so what, what was that called I think I think it's the brown advisor really I think that was the only one the first day the fifth race on the first day was the one he won last year won it easily Cheltenham no bother like I say it's consistency it's he's solid around 11 to 1 plenty to like expect a big run Again, it's solid is the word, definitely red. Another solid horse. Um, done nothing wrong this season, really. You know, beaten, quite well, actually quite well beaten behind Bristol Demite in the Charlie Hall. You can forgive him that run. Won at Aintree time after in a group two. Smashed Cloudy Dream. Time after that, smashed American in uh, the Cotswold here. Proved he like Cheltenham. Proved he'll stay. For me, it's consistency. He's not got the flashiest Trey and Jackie combination, but they know they, they know how to, you know, well, Brian Ellison knows how to gear a horse for a big race. Plenty to like. It would be a big win for the North. And again, expect a big, big uh, run from definitely Red. The third pick, um, although William Mullins has a bad record in this, a terrible record, to be honest, in the Gold Cup, I do like Total Recall. Uh, three from three since moving to uh, William Mullins is from Sandra Hughes's. Won all three with ease. Won the Hennessy. Well, I say, did he win the Hennessy with ease? No, but he won it a little bit snugly, maybe. Beat Whisper was obviously a smart horse. So narrowly behind my bite in the RSA last year. Um, I say, but he, the other two races he won with ease. It's a big step up. In, it is a big step up. And obviously, Cheltenham's the unknown. But around 20 to 1, for I reckon, actually, is the best Mullins horse out of the, the five he's running. So for me, Total Recall is my third fancy for the race. Um... Uh, as for the others, right, so Night Bite, um, obviously he's a classy horse, can't, I can't deny him that, but for me, three miles two furlongs of doubt anyway, is he three miles maximum, especially three miles two at Cheltenham, or three miles two and a half, sorry, around Cheltenham, obviously the hill is going to test his quirks to the max, they nearly proved it undoing in the RSA last year, but for me, narrowly beating Whisper, it's a different kettle of fish to um, what he's going to face here, and he can't afford to be swerving this way and that. And and if he bombs off in the tactics they did in the RSA, with the amount more horses in this field, the more quality, will those tactics be able to pay off here? I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Also, look at the King George run. I know he won it a little bit snugly, and he wasn't fully asked by Nico de Boisville, but he didn't win it by far. And did he beat much? I'm not sure, really. I think. I can get why people like him, but for me, I think he could be vulnerable. Native River was really sweet on him last year for the Gold Cup. Back to him. Looked the possible winner around two out, but slightly faded into third. I know it's off the ground this time around, but the race itself is no weaker. I just can't help thinking that if he didn't win it last year. Again, I know it's softer, but I just don't see why he's going to improve enough to win it this time around. Our Duke, you can see why people like him. Jesse Harrington trained the winner last year. Beat presenting Percy last time out, conceding seven pounds. Um, obviously, when we look at what presenting Percy did on Wednesday, um, he'll stay. He's won an Irish national, so you can't doubt his stamina. Cheltenham's a slight unknown, as is his. Well, his jumping's not unknown. His jumping's probably not good enough. If his, his jumping's improved on what he's shown so far, then he's going to be a massive player, but he can't afford to put in the juddering mistakes. They put in against presenting Percy last time. I think a couple of those could, you know, put put the put pay to his chances. Um, who else have we got written down on the piece of paper? I already mentioned Outlander. I don't think he's going to be quite good enough to win around Cheltenham. Uh, who else? But Kilta Vic, another Mullins horse. To me, again, a good horse is not the most natural jumper. He fell last time. I don't know how I feel about. I would, would I don't know how I would feel about backing a horse. Who fell last time out before, uh, you know, heading into a Gold Cup, and ultimately, I think the, I think the problem is, um, you know, is, is he experienced enough offences to be winning a Gold Cup? I have my doubts. And then, uh, the other horse I worth mentioning, Ed Wolf, 
one last time out, slight shock when he'd have to improve that. Sorry, he'd have to improve. He'd have to prove that that was no fluke. Uh, that remains to be seen. But for me, road to respect the main fancy. Uh, excuse me, shuffling around. Uh, road to respect the main fancy. Definitely red secondary fancy. A total recall is making up my trio. Um, Fox Hunter's time. Um, um, burning ambitions too short. Um, you're looking for a horse, I think, who's, well, recent renewal suggests that you want a horse who had a recent run over rules. So maybe a horse like Cab de Burley, whose last run's been a point run, could prove, um, you know, could, could be vulnerable. Uh, for me, uh, Paul Nichols is obviously, uh, he's after his first win of the week. I think he holds his best chance of winner here. Wonderful Charm was second last year. Narrowly behind Passion de Polder. Passion de Polder's got a less experienced jockey this time around. Goes from Bryony for us to... Bronny Frost, obviously a very clash jockey. To Harriet Tucker, uh, a jockey I don't profess to know too much about, although her racing post profile says she's only had one run, 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 one run over rules. So I his inexperience, inexperience is going to be shown up around a, around a course like Cheltenham. Well, like Cheltenham's the biggest stage of all. Inexperience will be shown up. So I expect wonderful charms to reverse the form of last year. Uh, Wally Cohen, Sam Wally Cohen's a good enough booking. One last time out of Musselburgh, nicely enough. And for me, around 7-1, to one, should be going close. Uh, Virax, Virac, ugh, sorry, too much talking this week. Virac is the other fancy. Uh, two from two for Paul Nichols this season. One and both nicely enough. Um, ought to be going close again. Um, so, yeah, and then the other two are, well, I've already mentioned Passion to Polder. On the fringe is the other horse worthy mentioned, but for me, last year, well beaten. I don't think he's a horse that he has been in previous years and could be best watched here. My Lord, Martin Pipe, crumb that's wide open. Flawless, flawless Escape, the SDBFs, the Al Destreval, like them all, a little bit too short maybe for a race of this size, willing to look elsewhere. Boro Saints, ignore his second behind... Um, Dortmund Park and aforementioned swimming pool bog of a race last time out. Forgive him that. Time before that, beast flawless escape by half length off level weights. Obviously, he gets a pull here. Well, there's nothing to do They got the same weight, sorry. So, you'd like to think that maybe on that run, Borough Saints has a little bit in hand. And Lizzie Kelly's books, obviously, we know Lizzie Kelly can ride around Cheltenham as uh, her win on Kustar Savola on the first day proves. Borough Saints, the main fancy. Melrose Boy, uh, course winner. Stays beyond the trip, which could prove all important. Uh, third behind top of the game at Sandown last time out. All in, uh, was a very good run. So, yeah, Melrose boy should be going well. A brave eagles, your horse. At a 40 to 1s, I think it's big. Nico de Boisville gave him an incredible ride at Newbury last time out. He came from absolutely miles back uh, to win. That's a slight danger here. He can't get too far behind. If I do go off fast, and he managed to pick them off, I think 40, ones, 40 to 1 is a ludicrous price. Uh, last race to bring the... Uh, week to a close is the grand annual uh, Vanatur wind up should um, do him the world of good hopefully the world of good um, you know he's been running against good horses recently top notch police log Fox Norton this season been getting stuff but again probably been handicapped for something like this probably been this race in particular David Pike knows how to handicap a horse for a big race so yeah I expect Vanatur to go well especially if the wind up works Dolos, unexposed, uh, beaten by Gino Trail last time, who re opposes, but again, you'd like to think improving every race. Wouldn't be surprised if it could reverse the form. Unexposed five year old, again, hopefully more to come. And um, the game changer, another horse had a wind up, smart horse on his day, lost his way, but you'd be full to rule out anything trained by Gordon Ellis, especially in those gigging style silks. Um, wouldn't be surprised if he capped off a fairly good week with, with a winner at the end. I say, wind up. It's all uh, with a lot of horse I mentioned, you know, um, in this in this video. Will wind up work if it does? I'd expect a big run. So, banner to the main fancy. Phew, all of that is gotten through. The video nap, Santini. Love the horse. Two out of two. Sheffield's Obo beaten. Black Hot beaten in two separate starts. Should stay. Go axe around Cheltenham. Big field, gets plenty of class, but I love the horse and I expect a big race. Video, video nap Santini. Vi next best, wonderful charm. Ought to reverse the form of Pasha de Polder sec uh, from second last year. Kind of the favourite, the price. Um, good win at Musselburgh last time out. 7-1 to one is decent enough price. 
So a video app done, Twitter tips challenge done. Best of luck whatever you're backing. I hope you've had a good week. I hope you have a last good day of the week. Say so best of luck. Have a great day. And for me, it's goodbye.